Hi, I'm Pox. I'm Couch Guy. I'm Hope Girl. And you're watching the Two Smart Guys show. And today we're coming to you live from Las Vegas at the... And from home base. What version? Um, or the yeah, 2011 yeah. NAB show. NAB show, yes. The, the show National that I didn't get to of broadcasters. <laughs> So, uh, if you miss, Couch Guy, what's, you what's the deal with this show? This is the largest uh, convention dealing with broadcasting. So we're talking about everything that has to do with uh, television production, um, uh, some movie production. I won't say everything because there's not a lot of movie vendors, but um, broadcast radio, broadcast TV. Now we're getting into video games and definitely anything that has to do with 3D. Um, and the new stuff that's going to be coming out will be at this show. Stuff that we won't see for years um, is at this show. So it is, uh, what, 100,000 plus attendees yeah, for it's... billions of dollars worth of gear. It's pretty, um, pretty big show. And uh, the reason why Hope Girl's joining us tonight is 11 years ago, Hope Girl and I got married down at NAB time in Las Vegas. <laughs> mm hmm we did. Woohoo! <laughs> yep. But before we get into talking and, to Gear, Hope Girl just wanted to say hi and give her a quick uh, two cents on NAB. Yeah, uh, during that first NAB that I went to with you, um, isn't that the one where I bumped into Dick Van Dyke? Or was it the second one? Um, I'm not I don't sure remember. Which one was, but. That's, uh, that's the other thing the about first. NAB. They got a lot of celebrities running around. Like uh, Kevin Smith, the director, was there, and he was giving his spiel on editing his latest movie on Avid Equipment. Please use Avid Equipment, please. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, yeah, one it, of the, the big announcements we have later in the show is about the new Apple Final Cut. In case you live under a rock. I do. I live under a rock. All right, so here's yeah, some, here's you some don't use it either. <laughs> here's here's some footage and um, commentary on what's the latest and greatest going on this year at NAB. All right, this year at NAB, everybody and their brother is making these cool little boxes or backpacks um, that allow you to stream video directly from your professional video camera out to the internet via regular air cards. So they use wireless bonding, so you can have like a Sprint card, an AT&T card, Verizon card. That way you have a more stable signal and higher bandwidth, so you can broadcast live. Uh, these little boxes or backpacks, they range from like $2,000 up to $20,000, or they have just monthly subscription fees. There's like a different bunch of different ways everybody's doing it. And they'd be really cool for like when we're doing shows at lines or launches of video game systems, things like that. And speaking of getting your one message out to many people, a go to meeting is an awesome way of holding meetings online through your computer so you can avoid costly travel. It's real simple. You just go to meeting.com and just click on the try it free button. Enter the promo code podcast and you'll get 30 days for free. Unlimited access to go to meeting. Uh, the, anyways, these wireless little boxes and backpacks seem like a really cool idea. And I think it might be a good episode to make one ourselves using like a little mini PC board and some batteries. So I might need to try that sometime. Canon was there showing off how awesome the 5D Mark II is and how they used it on uh, the season finale of House last year. Um, not because of budgetary reasons, because they have access to hundreds of thousands of dollar video cameras and film cameras, but because of its size and the quality that it gave. Last year we saw prototypes of 3D cameras. This year we saw shipping models of 3D cameras. Uh, Sony is no exception with the 3D cameras as well as showing off their red killing 8K camera. They also had a professional, a super rugged camera that'll work under rain and harsh conditions. Crazy rigs all over the place, including this iPad hooked up to a shoulder mount and mic. GoPro is there showing off cool little rigs for the GoPro camera as well as 3D. Everybody and their brother had choppers and jibs. A lot of little jibs for littler cameras because of the whole DSLR craze. 
Red made an appearance this year at NAB, showing off a short film about a tattoo. They even had live models there getting tattoos, where you could see the quality of the different cameras that they have. Mutech was there showing off their TriCaster product. A lot of vendors running around trying to sell new video production equipment, such as these cool little lights that are under 200 bucks. And of course, the big news was Apple showing off the new Final Cut X. Here's some highlights from the presentation. We think we have something which is as revolutionary as the first version of Final Cut Pro when it was introduced back in 1999. According to independent research, when the highest end of our marketplace, the broadcaster's post-professional, is choosing a non-linear editor, they are overwhelmingly selecting Final Cut Pro. So, where does that leave Adobe and Avid? Well, they'd like you to believe that they're competing with us. The truth is, they're in a race for second place. But I get to be one of the people that shows you exactly what it is we've been up to, which is building a brand new version of Final Cut Pro. This is a rebuilt application built from the ground up, re-architected based on modern technologies and based on leveraging all of the experience we've had building the existing Final Cut since its inception in 1999. This dialogue that you love? <laughs> So that's content audio analysis. I've got the price sitting warm here. You know, you've got all of these uh, clips that are really, really easy to identify. And I can make selections in here. I can put keywords on. I can... Can't wait to get the new Final Cut. It's so freaking cool that I think I should make my own t-shirt. One way you can make your own t-shirt is go to Zazzle.com. And if you use our uh, coupon code, Two smart guys 04. That's the number two smart guys 04. You can save 10% on orders $50 or more. The, the big, big news wasn't even at NAB. It was at a user group meeting for Final Cut Pro where Apple came in and booted out all the sponsors <laughs> and took over yeah, the show. You know, I have to say I completely disagree with Apple's approach, but whatever. Apple's Apple, and who tells Steve Jobs what to do? That's weird. They like snub the event for years, and then they show up and just exactly like, <laughs> take over. That's my problem. That's my problem. Apple has given the finger to both NAB broadcasters and the whole you know Super Meat convention issue. Like, they sent basically an intern there last year who said, yeah, oh, we're really glad you guys still use our stuff, thanks. And that was all he said. And this year, they have the gall to walk in, like, boot sponsors who paid to be there and then demand to be the only people who take the stage. Like, it's kind of prickish. And I'm, I, I can't tell you that I'm terribly excited about um, what I'm hearing out of Final Cut X. Um, because what they're not saying is kind of more important than what they are saying to me. They're not talking about the other parts of Final Cut that made the studio portion of it. They're not talking about um, the <clears throat> maintaining the professional side of this as much as I you know, would like them to. The only advantage that they've brought up is the fact that they said, we're going to be... Um, resolution agnostic and be able to accept anything from uh, your handy cam all the way up to 4k cameras you, you know well, that doesn't <laughs> you know bode well for all the rest of us if, if, you, if anybody knows anything about new tech which I talked about earlier they had a product called speed edit for windows and it was it did about 90% of what they were showing off in this new version of Final Cut the only issue with it was it was for windows and it was less than stable, and it never really caught on. But it did and all it was the for standard definition. No, it was high def. It was it was resolution mm -hmm. uh, agnostic. It could do up to 4K, or no, no wait, I think it was limited to 2K. 
But theoretically, they could have opened it up, and they may have. I, I don't know if they have or not. Um, and it could mix and match any kind of format. You never had to let it render. It did all background rendering. It used multiple multiple cores. It was awesome. And I switched away from and it because it, it didn't. Is it a new tech thing? Yeah, it was new tech. Yeah. And I switched away from it because everybody and their brother was using Final Cut, and I wanted to do you know join the Lemmings and yeah, we are Lemmings. Else was doing. <laughs> Plus, um, they didn't fully support the Kodak for the camera that I switched to. It worked, but whenever there was a a split at the two gig limit, there was one frame that would drop, so it would uh, look a little goofy. You know. There, you know, when it comes to uh, some encouraging things I hear out of this, the the method in which editing has become with that, I don't like how iMovie it's become on their new version, but I'm I'm willing to keep an open mind and the um, on the graphic design. The graphic design is what throws me for the biggest portion of it, but the, the aspects that... I like has okay. to do more with the how they're accepting second system sound better now. They're accepting um, higher resolutions with less headaches in the timeline. And in reality, their background rendering, if it really works as well as they say it does, will be pretty exciting because, you know, honest to goodness, un uncompressed video is a bear to deal with. So it's, it's really cool. Okay, so all the things that people are really complaining about are optional. The only thing that really isn't able to be turned off I think is the magnetic timeline where it automatically makes sure there's no collisions when you move things around on the timeline that's fine I can live with that I mean it's, it worked really well I mean if you were actually there and you could see the way that it was running it it totally made sense the way they did everything and all the stuff that seemed like it was made to be simpler more iMovie like you could always dig down deeper and go back into the professional you know high-end detail of, of moving things around and working with things. So I don't think there's any issues, good. personally. That's good. But, like I know. said, it's all cosmetic is the reason why I've got headaches with it right now. But, I, <laughs> like I said, I'm not going to I'm not gonna be judgmental on graphic design, because I understand that at the price point they're pushing, they have to make it as, re you know, dummied down for, honestly, soccer mom editors, where, you know, every Tom, Dick, and granddad's going to become an editor now. Uh, and in case anyone didn't hear the price point, Final Cut just went from what high end was thirteen hundred bucks, the highest it's ever been, um, yeah. down to two ninety. I think it's been like at a thousand now for a year or so. Yeah, it said it said a thousand dollars for the last year or so, but uh, it's now doing two ninety nine. So two, you know, two ninety nine. You can buy. Uh, it's going to cost you more to get uh, Office uh, two thousand twelve than it will get Final Cut. <laughs> The interesting thing is that's the suite, right? So that's got uh, motion and... It's got compressor. It's got color. It's got Soundtrack Pro. It's got DVD Studio Pro um, and uh, Cine Tools. Right. So, so this is just Final Cut. Six programs. Yeah. Six programs. So they might charge and they're gonna, three hundred dollars a piece for each of them. So they might have really increased with, the cost of the whole studio. <laughs> exactly, everything's going to go up. But see, what it looks—it like, really looks like they stripped down color, and they really stripped down Soundtrack Pro to make something that made Final Cut look nicer. Well, but really murdered two really nice programs. Yeah, it sounds like for me. I talked to one of the engineers, and they said only thing they've been working on for three years is this new Final Cut. It sounds like Final Cut 7 or whatever they came out with last was just kind of a maintenance thing to keep people happy while they were still working on the new one. It wasn't much maintenance. It was yeah. a bug fix. <laughs> we answered about that last year. Yeah, anyways, so he was telling me basically they haven't neglected all the other apps. They didn't even work on them at all. But he said they didn't show us hardly any of the features of the new Final Cut. And he said you could see a hint of what they did. So it sounded like they 
they um, integrated a lot of the feature sets from those separate applications and put them into the new Final Cut. Like the, the, the new color correction was able to do a lot of things that color could do. Yeah. Just from the demo. It, and there was probably it, it more that they didn't much, show us. I saw some demos on that stuff. And the color correction side and the audio, the way the audio is getting treated, very, very much nice. Uh, nicer than the existing software. And much more like their respective grandfathers of Soundtrack Pro and Color. So. Yeah. So, Not cool anyways, about something that I want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um, Freak camera. We, oh, the what camera? You, okay, you pick F three or the uh, the uh, FS one hundred. Okay, so both of which it, I just rant about for an hour. Interesting note about the F three and the FS one hundred. They were everywhere at the show. Sony supplied I'm sure. either real cameras or dummies to like every single booth at the entire show. So every single rig, every oh, kind so of whatever had one there. They sold yeah, the Sony's show. been putting out uh, Well, they not only did that. Okay, so the F3's been out long enough to be purchased by a lot of people. Like as much as I have a bad taste in my mouth when I mention the network, but Al Jazeera has been covering the uh, Japanese tsunami or not yeah issues with F3s and they've got some amazing footage that you can see on places like Vimeo and online of this you know a lot of Japanese news packages shot with the F3 uh, so the F3 has been out for a little while the FS100 is not for sale yet but they've been putting out a lot of pre-production models or what they're calling pre-production models and shipping them everywhere to try and get as much um, feedback and support from industry professionals as they can get. So, so I can imagine they definitely ship them to every uh, rental house that asked for or any, every other manufacturer that was putting goodies on them that they could because they're going to sell a piss out of that camera. Yeah, so these two cameras, they're interesting because so they're basically Sony's answer to the 5D Mark II. So they've got this huge sensor that's for 35 millimeter. It's a, uh, was it Super 35? So it's 35. actually slightly smaller, but it's made for video. It's not made for, no, for pictures stills. Yeah, and well, the way the, that the chip's made, it actually has better sensitivity. Yeah, well, the Super 35 is actually the uh, real sensor that you should be using for video rather than what the 5D Mark II is using which granted is a much bigger sensor it's uh, what uh, like 12-13% larger than the uh, Super 35 sensor the Super 35 sensor is much closer to what the 7D uses which in terms of uh, video and things like that I don't know it's hard to describe but the 5D Mark II may have the large massive sensor but it doesn't use all of its pixels when it's actually putting video out. It actually strips out a bunch of them. But because the sensor, it gets a great depth of field and everything everyone likes. So the Super yeah. 35 is still a fantastic sensor. Yeah, so these <coughs> Sony cameras, there's also a Panasonic camera that's about five grand. Yeah. I can't remember. But it's, it's a, was that a Micro Four Thirds? And it's, it's actually a micro pretty, that was, a, that was around the show a lot too. There's a lot of talk about that camera as well. That, that one, that one has, if you're a Panasonic person, you really like that camera. Yeah, so the the big thing this year was, you know, the the cine, cinema versions Cine-y. of video cameras. Oh, let me put it this way. The F3 for uh, outperforms the 5D Mark II and a lot of other cameras uh, of the same pricing bracket. To, so to be fair, we're talking about cameras that are, uh, say, 30000 below uh, because it's not fair to compete with the Ari Alexia or uh, the Red. Not that I think that it couldn't, but it's not fair to compete in that area because you're talking about a camera that's $60,000 and to $150,000. And it doesn't want to compete with the, the, F, uh, the F35, Sony's Super uh, 35 censored you know, movie camera. But for the dollar so a $20,000 with lenses three lenses camera 
has uh, what is it, uh, 6400 ISO and no noise in the blacks. Uh, so super sensitivity that it actually beats the 5D Mark II on sensitivity versus noise. Um, you know, we're talking about stuff that's really impact, but it's $20,000 camera. You know, 5D Mark II is 2500 bucks for, you know, the, the body. And one could uh, argue that these are really giving Red to run for their money, even though Red's technically a higher um, resolution, kind of. It's not really. <laughs> if you, if you yeah. listen to how well, Sony explains how the information's read. Uh, well, it's true on how the information's read. We know it's, it's, Red is as much of a gimmick as it is fact. You know, they really do push their numbers to make them look good no matter how you say it. You know, Sony yeah. could have higher, res you know, the same resolution as Red, but Red's going to count every bit plus the bits that don't get used, you know. It's, 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 it's unique. It's it's interesting. Especially for a company that took, oh, what, four oh, years oh. to come out with... Oh, sorry. How long ago did Red start getting promoted because I remember when that when Pat started talk or Pox started talking about you know the red camera you know Probably and uh, four years ago they announced the camera they finally put out this year seriously <laughs> well the red geez. one they announced before that was it was it when we got married when they announced the red one the first one was it really? The red one. It's been yeah. that long. No, the red came out. Um, just the announcement on red one was like seven years ago, eight years ago. And it took like four okay. years or something before the thing came out, didn't it? Wow. No, the red one only took because I bet you it was six years ago for the red one. Seven years ago announcement, six years ago for production models, and then hmm. probably five years ago for real shipped used, and used versions because four years ago when they announced Scarlet Red was being used or beginning to be used by filmmakers right. so it had been out long enough to be purchased and people had been purchasing it but I remember right. back when they had their, their big freaking tent that they all they had was a freaking sensor in the middle of it and they asked <laughs> you for $100,000 well and now right. This year, just this past year, is the first year that there's actually been real, like, movies that have come out that have been shot yeah. on Red. Like The Social right. Network and True Grit and stuff like that. There's been some is movies that before that that have used it. There's been a couple of documentaries that used it, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's nothing... And there's still not... The problem with Red, <clears throat> despite... I actually, I was hugely optimistic for Red. I, You know, if Red mm -hmm. really would have put out... 3k for three thousand dollars the way they said they would they would have crushed mm -hmm. the market um, right. especially the original idea four years ago but after it took so long and then they started redesigning and then they started really saying we're not gonna we're not gonna make it this way um right it, it, all it did is open up time for people like sony to really focus on okay the market wants a gigantic censored camera the market right. wants four times longer than 12 minutes um let's see what we can do and we can use our existing xd cam format because this new trend of everybody just taking the sdi out is to our benefit and right. which i think is fantastic so it's i don't know i don't see i see the red fanboys um sticking around just because they invested a hundred thousand dollars but if red doesn't start pumping out like massive amounts of updates and really cool stuff Man. that they can show off every year they're not going to compete as a camera, camera company right because right. Canon's so, going to have a problem if Canon doesn't put something out next year camera wise they're they're done as like the they're, they're going to be the one hit wonder back to making the little bitty cameras that everyone kind of uses and doesn't think about yeah yeah so anyways we need to wrap this up we're going on 25 minutes now so ah uh, whatever <laughs> I could go for hours <laughs> you could and I could too but I think Hope Girl's about ready to fall asleep I could go sleep yeah. oh man I'm 
Uh, my eyes are shutting. I thought, I thought you were going to leave after the introduction. <laughs> I, I was, actually. I'm, I'm sitting here going, Wah. yeah. <laughs> well, sorry. sorry to keep you up so long. All right. No, well, um, it's, it's, I should have left. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, so if you like this ranting, we tend to do about one episode like this once a month. <laughs> and the other episodes that we do are usually tutorials on on hacking, electronics, getting the most out of your little gadgets, or the news on the latest gadgets that are coming out that we are going to hack in a future episode. <laughs> or better so, yet, if you're a Sony representative and you want to have somebody uh, test the F3 extensively for like a year, I volunteer. Oh, okay. I'm sure um, somebody will help you out with that. <laughs> speaking of hacking new electronics, I finally found one of these at a GameStop. So there'll be an episode oh, on this. Oh, you at a GameStop? Stop. What, the old original... Uh... Holy PS smokes, you got yourself a GoPro. I mean, like, the, not uh, the GoPro, the... The PSP Go. <laughs> yeah, PSP Go. Oh, how much was that? A bill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Less than my speeding ticket. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Less than your speeding. You said your speeding ticket was ninety bucks. Oh, okay. Maybe a little bit more than my speeding ticket. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Any taxes. Anyways, um, what's your thoughts on this conversation that we've had? Post in the, the comments below what you think is going to win. Is it going to be Sony cameras? Are gonna, people going to get the what is it, the F3? Or the the F, FS100? And like a little card reader to do higher end recording formats? Or Absolutely. And if you think be... I'm way off about the whole red thing and you love red, please tell me. I want to hear about it. I want to know why all of it. And uh, don't forget, our, we're all on Twitter. I'm actually at Walking Crow. And you're actually a Hope Girl, right, Hope Girl? Yeah, at Hope Girl. Yeah. And um, uh, see, H O P E G R R R L. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I, I interrupted Three you. Up. I'm the weird on the group that and, doesn't and, have the. I'm and, not at Couch Guy, I'm at <laughs> Tommy5C. But the, the, the real the couch guy likes the the followers in the conversation. Oh, yeah. The guy gets you know, <laughs> you know, just from the the circle of friends that we that do the show here. Ragable will do it every once in a while. Pox has done it once in a while. You know. <laughs> and I'd like to thank um, an individual. I don't have his name on me because I'm traveling, but he donated a handful of domains. For two smart guys, yeah, I donated the um, really? the misspellings, mm -hmm. the the t w o two smart guys dot com and dot net, and number two smart guys dot com and dot net. He just flat out transferred them. So now uh, well. people type those in, you'll get to our website still. So it doesn't matter how you try to get to two smart guys dot com, you'll be able to get to it now. Thank you, kind sir. Yes, <laughs> I'll um I'll have something in the credits thanking you. <laughs> Anyways, um, subscribe to the Lovely team. Don't did I. So, hey, Couch Guy, is there a Couch Guy on Twitter? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's an ad Couch Guy on That's Twitter. Awesome. And every and time Red jumps up and goes, hey, Couch Guy, this poor guy, That's like, funny. gets bombarded. And he's a tech guy. He, like, he does his own podcast, I think. That's funny. <laughs> and there's oh. a Pox, too. I tried to really? get Pox, but they wouldn't let me because it's three characters, and they you had to have uh, a minimum of four. But this other oh, yeah, Pox had an end. I tried to do four. Really? So there's like an X-rated Pox, like Pox Triple X. <laughs> I don't know, but there's a Pox <laughs> with Pox. three characters. Somehow they got, they called up Twitter and said, "Hey, can I get my name or something?" And they got in. Huh. Weird. It's probably one of those early, early ones. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, anyways, harass, no, harass at Raggable and tell him to actually um, call in. <laughs> yeah, to wake up at 10.30 at night. Actually, 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> All right, see you guys next week. Yeah. This is a Two Smart Guys production. This is, this is a Two Guys production. <laughs>